Hey, everybody, this is uh, Kevin from ChangeWorks Interactive, and welcome to the podcast, Changing Gears. I think you're really going to enjoy our, uh, our guest today. Uh, today, we have uh, Jerry Popwich, who's joining us from the Ottawa area today. And uh, just a little bit about the show again, Changing Gears is about making personal or professional change. Uh, I'm a psychotherapist. I run a company called ChangeWorks Interactive out of Oakville, Ontario. And we take a dive into the lives of some very interesting people. I think you're really going to enjoy uh, Jerry's story today. Uh, Jerry's an interesting guy. He's the former executive vice president of uh, Mercury Filmworks in Ottawa. He's a graduate of the animation program at Algonquin College. And uh, Jerry... Uh, was an alumni of the year uh, very recently. Um, and Jerry, by the way, doesn't, um, he won't build himself up. He doesn't like that. <laughs> uh, I'll brag for him. Uh, McLean's Magazine did a piece on Jerry just a few years ago on uh, some of the folks who have made their starts through college programs like Algonquin and who have done very well and are very successful. Jerry's uh, produced and creative and created a number of different animated shows throughout his career uh, from the likes of uh, The Simpsons. He's worked with Disney. He's worked with Pixar. He is also a Northern boy. I had the opportunity of growing up with Jerry when we were younger, and uh, we're both graduates of Westgate High School in Thunder Bay. Um, Jerry, Jerry currently lives in, in Chelsea, Quebec with his wife, Amy, and his two daughters, Ellie and Abby. Now, Jerry, you got a really interesting story, um, and I've always uh, kept in touch and followed your career. Now, you're growing up in Thunder Bay, and it's probably the late 80s. You've always been talented uh, in, in designing and drawing, but you decide you're going to leave a full-time job at that time, and you're going to move to, you're going to move to Ottawa. Tell us, Jerry, how that all came about, and, and, and sort of what you're going through at the time. Why was that a good time for you to make that change? So after high school, um, I think a lot of you guys, you guys all you know, knew where you wanted to go. You went, you had your college plans and university plans, but I, I, my, my grades weren't that great. And my, uh, I remember this, I, I always blame it on the student's counselor, but it was probably my fault too. I could have looked around a little bit more, but I just asked him, you know, I like drawing, I like cartoons, uh, I like animation. Is there anywhere where I could do that? And I remember, <laughs> no, you, your marks aren't good enough. You should probably just go to the paper mill. Great Lakes uh, at the time in Thunder Bay had the big paper mill. Um, so, <laughs> so I didn't really look around much more after that. And I went to the paper mill, like my dad said, you, you, you got to get a job, Jerry. So, and then uh, went to the paper mill, uh, you know, it's, it's a mill, really good money. So you kind of get stuck there for a while. Yeah. But I've always, uh, I always kept drawing. I always kept trying to, um, do t-shirt designs for a local company in, in Thunder Bay. Uh, there was an advertising company I tried to get into. I just went and knocked on his door and Barry Smith and Associates. And he said, he gave me, you know, I kind of liked, I guess, that I went up and knocked on his door. So he said, yeah, you know what, I, might, I, might, I could use you. So I'd go there on the weekends and at night sometimes and do a little extra stuff. Just knowing that I never wanted to be in the paper mill forever, but it took me like 10 years of working there before uh, a friend of mine that I played football with, Albert Molnar, I think you know him. He's a yep, yep. great athlete. He sure. came back one summer to work in the mill and he said, yeah, I'm doing this animation course in uh, Algonquin. I go, Algonquin, where's that? In Ottawa, I'm going to college. It's uh, cartoons. I go, are you kidding me? So uh, I, looked at, I looked into it and um, I uh, did a portfolio and I said, well, if I get in, maybe it's meant to be. And if I don't, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing here. You know, it's not so bad, but but fortunate enough, I got accepted, and I talked to my dad, talked to my family, and said, "I think I'm going to make this move." That's, and it was that's a big awesome. move because, yeah, it was a big move because there's a pension that you know after 10 years you built yeah. up in the mill, and um, but yeah, that's how kind of when it started. So that that's a big decision for you at the time, right? Like your family is pretty ingrained in Thunder Bay, so yeah, they're all there. Yeah, big yeah, family. For you to say, it's, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Thunder Bay. I'm gonna go to Ottawa. Um, there was a few, uh, few, uh, people that we knew from Thunder Bay that were in the Ottawa area, but you didn't know That's a lot right. of people there. So you're no. starting out, Jerry. So, um, you know, this is a program where somebody might be looking, uh, to go into the field of animation, for example, 
Um, yeah. Maybe you could tell us about some of the some of the barriers or challenges that you had, sort of getting into the field, getting established, and and taking off from there. Okay. Um, well, one thing I thought, like I knew I was a pretty good artist when I got into school, but the one thing is that you'll find out is that you you can't get intimidated because I, I was I was like. I was just like the rest of them now. Like in, in high school, I was always a better drawer, but in, in college, you find all these people from all over Canada, or all over the world that are going to college with you and they're all the same skill level or better. Yeah. In fact, a lot of them were better than me. So I'm like, oh man, I'm not that good. So it's just a lot of hard work, I think, is, is, is the big one. And just to keep, keep kind of trying to hone your craft. But my biggest challenge when I got out of college, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't really the the school like it was hard but it was fun because it was animation yeah but at the time it was in the, the early 90s and there was no work at all like uh i got out and there, there was there's no work there was, I, I i remember drawing um you might have even seen some of them in thunder bay at christmas time drawing like painting pictures on the windows yeah. of banks and coffee shops I did, sure i had a, <laughs> this little chevette with no brakes that i'd drive around and i'd use the emergency brake and hey could i paint something on your window but uh so that was my biggest challenge was just trying to find work and then i eventually got out to vancouver did a three-month stick uh stint out there and uh played played sports with uh with a couple of the studios and they said and they were running out of work again too like it was only a three-month thing but he said you know there's this guy in uh there's this guy in ottawa that's starting a studio up i know him i'll go here's here and he wrote on his business card uh hire him he's a good shortstop <laughs> So it always seems like sports and, and art. Yeah, always yeah, there's all, lots, of connect, lots of connections through your sports, right? Yeah, yeah. It really, really, it really kind of yeah, it worked for me. But anyway, so I started with them. Uh, it was really cool because it was a studio just starting out. And again, I was probably a bottom tier of the artists that they had at the time. But they, you know, they stuck with it. And you just got to ask a lot of questions. Like I'd, I'd always be asking other artists, how do you do that? I'd, I'd watch over their shoulders, like seeing how they draw, like actually taking it in. So I did a lot of that at the early stages, and then I worked for that company both for about ten years for uh, okay. Unbank Studios. What were some projects that you guys, you know, back in those earlier days that you guys had worked on? Would, would, would there be some of the projects that uh, that maybe people that are tuning into this might might recognize? Yeah, I actually, um, um, for sure, The Simpsons. That was is still one of my highlights. Awesome. I still draw Homer pretty good. But yeah, and that was a big one because I guess Fox down in, in the States were running out of, um, uh, they just can't get the work done. And our, the owner of our studio knew the guy. Yeah. So we had to do this test. We had to draw a test. Like, and it was hard. Like they're, They seemed simple to draw, but it was really hard. And I think there was only six of us got, that got chosen to work on it. So that was one of my big highlights. Um, Undergrads was another one, one of the first shows I directed. That was kind of a big cult thing. Uh, it was even going around the internet where people were trying to kind of get, get it back on air. Like, we need more seasons. We need more seasons. It was a really good one. I uh, had a great relationship with the creator of that. So yeah, it's been really interesting. It's, it's, it's been a pretty fun career so far. It, it sounds like um, your ability or the ability of someone in the field just to just to uh, uh, be okay with taking risks and connecting with others and, yeah. and, and networking is really important. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the biggest one because I noticed after getting into the field and I, cause I never really considered myself an artist, artist, artist kind of type, but the, uh, I soon found out that a lot of artists are sort of similar in the way that they're, um, they're a little shy. So that was a big one. You really have to kind of, when you get, if you get into a studio or if you get into, into school, you, you can't be shy. You got to ask questions. You got to be friendly. You got to, you got to look for those open doors because I'm yeah. a big believer of if something's opening. There's probably a reason for it. So yeah, at least look into it a little bit. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Um, do you think, do you think Jerry, like after you, after, you know, what you've been through and, you know, you look at, yeah, I know you've done some, uh, done some work and you talk to a lot of students. Do, do you think that um, colleges have kind of gotten a bad rap? And, and if so, give us, give us your experience of, of uh, maybe some advantages that a kid would have going to college as opposed, as opposed to going the university route. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, never, I never went to university. I don't, I don't know. I know that's a lot longer and it's a lot more expensive. And that was one of the reasons why I chose a college, a community college, was because it was only a two-year course and the tuition wasn't much. So that's, I think, one advantage was that it was such a short kind of just two years. You, you kind of learn your skill, you learn your craft. 
That's what I feel like they do at Algonquin and, and other community colleges like Kong College in Thunder Bay. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you kind of get in, you learn your craft, and then it's up to you to sort of take that little bit of information and then go with it. But I don't know what university is like. Like, I don't know. It seems like there's just a lot of stuff you probably don't even use. I, I don't know. You know. Yeah. What yeah, do you yeah. think? Well, I, I think I think the um, I think the the mindset of college has changed a lot. In fact, what you'd see now is a lot of people with university degrees that are going back to get that practical hands on hands on work and knowledge that that a community college would offer. So I think yeah. that I think that's a real transition or a real change that, that's been going on as well. Yeah. No, I'm I'm still very heavily involved or was up, up to last year with Algonquin too, and I I love that school. I think it's uh, they. They turn a lot of uh, grads that actually get jobs in, in, in all over the world, like not just animation, in, in all their uh, different departments. Very interesting. So uh, I'm talking to Jerry just before the show starts today, and he's got all this stuff, as you can see, back there on his desk and, and uh, on his shelves back there. And, and, uh, and I'm saying, hey, Jerry, what have you been up to lately? And what's some of that stuff back there? And uh, he's describing, maybe you could do that, Jer. Like, just tell us some of the stuff that's back there and maybe some of the things that you're proud of um, that, that you've got. Okay. There's um, this little picture here. All that dueling paid off was a little interview I did. Just talking about, again, Thunder Bay. And so I'm kind of, you know, a little dueling I did through high school and at the mill and then it kind of did pay off because I got, I got a job in it. So I'm kind sure. of happy with that little article. That was a Thunder Bay article up there. Very good. Um, I got just a lot of Wizard of Oz stuff. Big collector of Wizard of Oz. A lot of family pictures. A lot of pop-up books. Uh, Johnny West. I don't know if you remember this guy. From the Johnny old, uh, West. I don't think so. Hey. I don't think. From the 70s? Look at that guy. He looks like Indiana Jones. <laughs> Um, and then I pulled this out for you. I know you're setting me up, but check this one out. Wow. So what's, so uh, your, your team won an Emmy. So talk about that, Jerry. And, and I didn't know, I didn't know that. So yeah. uh, there's a little hidden gem for sure. <laughs> Though the studio, uh, no, I'm very proud of the studio that I worked at. Uh, a lot of really talented people. This one we won for a Netflix show called uh, Hilda. We won for outstanding main title and uh, graphic design. So the main title that comes out before the animated show starts. Yeah. Um, there was a category for that, and uh, we won an Emmy. And we also won another couple other day daytime Emmys: one for Toot and Puddle, and another one for Hilda. So awesome! Yeah, Congrats! I, that's that's amazing. You, um, uh, from what my limited knowledge of an animation studio, and you're telling me about the headcount that you guys had at at Mercury, you get you get to some some bigger numbers with the amount of, of people that are working there. And that inevitably, um, I guess, produces some challenge for you in a management role. Um, and I guess what comes with that is is a lot of stress and, and coping with that. How, how do you how did you manage that, like managing the stress and and um, you know what are the things that kind of worked for you? Because your headcount got into a couple 300 people wasn't it yeah when we started we were only like 30 and uh up to about 150 was kind of where i really liked that because I, I still knew everybody's name i could still you know kind of go around and talk to them and get them get them riled up and get the energy going to get to keep the culture going but then we started growing because we were doing some really good work and uh the phone started ringing off the hook so we kept we were turning away work and then the work we were doing was attracting more artists. Like, oh, I'd really love to work at your studio. I see the stuff you guys do. Like, I want to be that good. Um, so it's like a double-edged sword. It was good, but then we have all these people coming in. We have all this work coming in. So to keep up with that, though, uh, like we were up, by the time I left, uh, and I just actually left, I think I told you that, but uh, yeah. uh, we were up to over 300 people. And wow. I was getting, it was getting to the point where I was, I didn't know people anymore. Some people would walk by me. I, I, I couldn't even, didn't recognize them. <laughs> and, uh, like this is and it was stressful because i found myself doing less and less of the creative and being hands-on and doing more of the culture kind of hr stuff which is okay and i'm, you know, I'm i guess i'm all right with at it but it wasn't my passion and not why i got into it yeah i guess that's i guess that's a, that's a really good point jerry is that you know is that everybody's wired to do something you know whether that's 
you know, whether that's the hands-on yeah. work or, or you, you know, there's people that are, that are, that are working trades or, or, or it might be into, uh, you know, some, some level of community service. Some people really enjoy the hands-on work. Um, and if you get away from what you're interested in, that, that's got to be, that's got to make it really challenging for you. Yeah, I think that's when it starts to kind of not be where it starts to be more of a job again. Like I always would brag for for years about, well, oh, it's not even like I'm going to work. It's just like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have fun with my friends and draw. But yeah, it, it started turning into more to more of a, of a job. And and but some people are really good at that. Like some people yeah. love the HR stuff. You know, like some some people are. But yeah, you're, you're exactly right. We're all wired differently. And um, when it got stressful, I found the easiest thing to kind of get over that stress was just to kind of go back into what I love doing, which was either sculpting or drawing or just getting some fresh air you know what you know what i did this christmas what'd you do now getting rid of uh to get rid of stress puzzles oh, when was the yeah. last time you did a puzzle they're yeah. amazing yeah yeah i can sit there for hours and just like <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> neat that's pretty neat yeah, puzzles. we got a few on the go right now too so yeah i love it it's great it's a good stress relief um, finally, Jerry, um, uh, tell us what's, tell us what's around the corner for Jerry Popwich. Like what's, what's happening uh, down the road? What are you looking at? What kind of things would you like to be in, involved with? Are you semi-retired? Are you looking to get back into the, um, I I into the animation world? So, so what's happening? Honey, what am I going to do again? For <laughs> no, you know what I've been doing? Uh, I, I think my biggest my biggest passion, even outside of animation and drawing, is sculpting. And that's one thing I think I'm going to be getting into a lot more. Um, I've been looking at YouTube, finding out how to carve snow without, you know, you don't need the sticky stuff, I found out. You can just pack it into a box and it turns into the square uh, snow that you can sculpt out of. So I've, I've been really, really, really enjoying that. And I still... Um, I don't know if you remember in high school, Kevin, I was in a little play that we did, but I've been doing some acting still. Oh, that's great. Well, you got to- Yeah, I had a kid show before. I was going to do. Um, there was a kid show that I, I- So a little bit of acting, a little bit of sculpting. I think that's what's new. That's what's going to be coming for, uh, for me. That's great. That's great. great. Thanks so much, Jerry, for joining us today. Thanks, um, Kevin. This is awesome. Yeah. Your, your, your story is really inspiring. You know, like I, I've, I personally, I've, I've, um, uh, I had a chance in my career to, um, uh, not just as a therapist, but also as a high school teacher, to run across a lot of kids and a lot of kids out there are really unsure about what to do. And I think listening to your story today would inspire a lot of, a, a lot of uh, people that have some talent uh, to get into the world of animation. I, th I think that's a, a, a wonderful thing that you're doing. Um, so uh, just so that we wrap up today, Again, I want to uh, I want to thank our guest uh, Jerry Popwich for joining us today. We'll put Jerry's information on our on our website, and I invite you to uh, tune into ChangeWorks Interactive. And uh, if you uh, want to subscribe, there's a button on on our website uh, that you can do that, and uh, you can connect with ChangeWorks Interactive through all our social media. Uh, outlets. Thanks again, Jerry, for joining us today. Thanks, Kev. That was okay. a pleasure. It was, uh, it was fun. But before we leave, uh, one question for you. <laughs> Bucks or Chiefs? Well, I, I got to go with the Bucks because it's kind of my second team and, and it's, the, it's the history thing of the team playing in the Super Bowl is a team from that city. That's kind of neat. So I'm going to I'm gonna go we're gonna ride with that one. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Jerry. We'll talk to Thanks, you soon. Thanks, Kev. Okay. Good seeing you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye now. Bye.